weird stuff going on with Dave Rubin these days. He's sort of all over the place. He's sort of uh, like, he doesn't know who he's supposed to sort of like sign on with. You get separated from the herd and then you don't know which herd you're meant to like tear off and follow. You're kind of just alone out there, herdless. Um, <laughs> the, I like this clip because A, it's like he's sort of stating sort of this obvious uh, thing in, in, on top of his lies and then doesn't understand, uh, doesn't know the English language. Here we go. You know, as we see this divide, we are called the United States of America. And you're right, we're gonna have to figure out what unites us because if we sort ourselves out, and okay, all like-minded people live in red states and people who think the other way live in blue states, eventually we'll just be at war with ourselves. That's obviously a huge problem. We already had one civil war, fairly close to our founding. Uh, but the other problem I think well, that, that people can't I just wanna just you know, tell you guys who are not that into uh, history, it was fairly close to our founding, almost in the same way that we're not that far from when we had that either. We're fairly close to World War II. <laughs> right. I mean, it was, it was 90, 90 years uh, from fairly our founding. Close. close enough. I mean, I mean, to the slaves, might have felt like a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> Several generations, probably, actually. But fairly in history, let's just We put got it to it eventually. Yeah, okay. Grasp is that this isn't... This isn't a problem of, oh, I want a marginal tax rate of 10% and you want 20%. This isn't really a problem of, I want 10-week abortion and you want 15-week abortion. The problem is that right, we pause are for one second. I just want to just sort of say, um, I just make a point about these two things, is that uh, the Republican Party, it's not hard to find uh, Republicans and conservatives who say that uh, taxation is theft. <laughs> and uh, they literally call for the abolishment of the IRS, which is the mechanism in which we collect taxes, incidentally. Um, and uh, the idea that it's not a marginal uh, argument between 10 and 20 percent, you know, which is hilarious because on capital gains, like he's already... <laughs> Uh, the, he's just talking about like, you know, we want it that much less taxes taken, right? He's not even acknowledging that there could be any other sort of like reasonable position in terms of taxation. Um, and, uh, when he's talking about, what was the second thing he mentioned was the, um, oh, abortion ban. Yeah. 10, um, 15 weeks. Yeah. 10, 15 weeks. I mean, it, it, everybody knows that. The 15 week abortion ban, like even Trump couldn't even support that because his Republican Party needed to allow for a full ban of abortion in, in, in many states and if not nationally. I like this new thing, like how he defines what's the parameters of like discourse it, instead of the Overton window. This is like the Ruben pinhole. Oh, this is the same guy who said that guy. Well, who is that guy that was a moderate, the the, the bald cult leader guy? Uh, oh, what was that guy's name is? Um, who said you should from Canada? I can't remember. Molyneux. Who, yeah, Stefan Molyneux, who's like been banned from everywhere. And God knows where he is now in a rubber Defooing. room somewhere or something, uh, was a moderate. But go ahead of I want 10 week abortion and you want 15 week abortion. The problem is that we are ideologically opposed to each other in, in very, very deep ways right now. The left, which now control the, the radical left, which took control of the Democrat Party, they believe that the founding of America was evil. They believe that America is systemically racist. Um, they believe that if only the government had more power, it could rejigger society in some sort of what they would describe as a utopian manner. Of course, we know it would actually end in a dystopian manner. Positive. They think that boys are- Okay, and the, uh, just go back a little bit. I mean, um, the idea that there's no systemic racism in our society is pretty, uh, I think, um, I mean, uh, you've got to be incredibly deluded. Um, I don't know how you describe mass genocide of the indigenous people who are here as like anything but you know, maybe maybe problematic. Would yeah. you feel more comfortable with? What I mean, does yeah, would turn something good, but something to endeavor to repair and make amends for. Exactly. <laughs> uh, he, you know, it's the people on the right who uses good and evil stuff more than anything else. Um, but 
I don't think that government is going to make a, a utopia, but I do think that government makes things better. And cut poverty. Yeah. I mean, we literally did cut poverty in half with uh, the, um, uh, the flip of a pen. And then we just let it uh, grow back. I mean, that's not utopia, but it's better. Go ahead had more power, it could rejigger society in some sort of what they would describe as a utopian manner. Of course, we know it would actually end in a dystopian manner. They think that boys are girls. They think that by not arresting criminals, you de-incentivize criminality. Almost every position, and I'm, we could go do many more of these. Pons, oh, you know what else? Like, yeah, that, um, that marriage equality is okay. That two guys could like get married and have a child. I mean, 20 years ago, folks, the sa- you'd hear the same cat crap from conservatives, not girls or boys and this and that. Was it Adam and Steve? Adam, and Steve, they it would be it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, and he completely ignores that. Completely, ign- he has to, so desperate on the to ignore that his. I would imagine the two major relationships he has in his life. The fundamental building blocks of his life are his husband and his kids, neither one of which would be possible were it not for the people that he is disparaging right now. Neither one of which, not even close, not even close. His life would be bereft. Well, you know, we skip through that. Go ahead. That, that was ancient history. I mean, if the Civil War took place more or less, you know, close to the founding, then I got news for him. The existence of his entire life happened a second ago uh, in terms of, of, of what happened to change to allow him to be married, to have all the rights of a married individual. Live his best life. To be able to have uh, two children. Go ahead. Think that boys are girls. They think that by not arresting criminals, you de-incentivize criminality. Almost every position, and we could go do many more of these. Oh, almost dude. every position that they've taken is so radically antithetical to reality that I don't know how you, how do you mend with that? Because we have a certain set of people who kind of want to live and let live. We understand what our rights are, and we want to be able to protect ourselves and speak freely, and then so be it. Have and then push. we have a bunch of other people that radically want to transform that into something else. How you arbitrage those two things, I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. <laughs> well, first off, well, I'll save that for last. But, you know, this radical transformation there was nothing more radical than the idea of a marriage not being between a man and a woman. I mean, I can't tell you for how many years that was the mantra. Nothing more radical than that. And, and then, you still see bumper stickers saying a child needs both a mother and a father. Yeah, I mean, nothing more radical. And partly because, you know, Joe Biden basically came out and said it, uh, said, but we, I think, that, you know, gay people should be able to get married. Um, and then, of course, uh, one of the reasons why Dave Rubin and, and you know, the, the, the value of that clip to me is that we can go through these different things and give people a historical context. But there's also value in that it also shows how stupid Dave Rubin is. Um he cannot find anybody to figure out how you arbitrage those two things <laughs> because that would mean uh, if you were to arbitrage those two things, you would somehow figure out how to find the value difference in those two things between markets. And you would be able to um, buy one of them low and sell the other one high and make the difference between those two things. That's what you do when you arbitrage. Um, what he means, the, I think he means is like to arbitrate, maybe? Uh, right. Yeah, not arbitrage. Not arbitrage. Um, but that's the, uh, that is the Dave clip for the day. But this is the Dave Rubin clip for the uh, bonus round. Here is Dave Rubin. He's been on this sort of like, uh, this, this, 
every time we see him go on any of the shows, there's always like he's, it's almost like he's now, uh, who is that guy, like uh, the, the progressive voice, like the guy who used to like sort of like uh, do all the play-by-play. Like, oh, yeah, progressive voice. He's almost like the business reporter for the right wing now, uh, Dave Rubin is. Yeah, except like progressive voice and now the boys at the Vanguard, they like actually get into details of these things. And well, Rubin, like, that's the thing is there's no ideology here. It, it's it, Dave Rubin understands that it's all about business and understand that he is talking about the behemoth, the uh, essentially the 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 center of gravity and the right wing um, echo chamber media sphere. He is basically crapping on, but also pretending he's not, which is fascinating. He's such a coward about it. And also, Will Kane is too. That Will Kane has to run away from this too. It's pretty funny. Well, do you think beyond Israel? Okay, beyond this issue. Um, so when I asked you about the we're just asking questions um, style of discourse, I actually wasn't even just leading you into a discussion of anti-Semitism or Israel. I, I'm. I, I wonder. Do you think? You talked about misleading your audience. Do you think there is a problem on the right? Like the left wants to censor, yeah. right? And yeah. and there's a good there's a good chunk yeah. of conservative influencers who are I, I think I'm I'm comfortable saying this who are and I'm not who are pretty cynical in putting out things that are at least at the very least sloppy. And I'm not talking about on the issue that we've been discussing on any host. Of it. I saw it with Maui. Okay, I saw it with Maui. Like a whole rotten narrative was put out when it came to Maui that was pure BS about blue roofs and laser beams and direct energy weapons. And a lot of it came from the right. And so, like, mm -hmm. well, it's just we're just asking questions. Do you think there's a problem? Pause on the right for one section? Section. Yes. You know, you know, um, Will uh, should find out where he works. Does he still work on Fox or is he left? This is Fox News Audio. Oh, this is Fox News Audio. It's fascinating because, you know, um, one of the biggest defamation suits and like ongoing lot project of lies that maybe ever took place in the uh, media uh, yeah. was recently settled with those guys. Yeah, maybe instead of asking Dave Rubin, he should ask legal. <laughs> Exactly. Feeding <laughs> in to this censorship well, there's a problem. idea. Well, there's a problem because of the way business operates. Let, let's remove any uh, any going after anyone's intentions or thinking anyone is a hater of this person or this group or anything else. At a purely business level, there's an issue here. Tucker Carlson is no longer with Fox. He now has his own network. I, I like Tucker. So this is not a knock on Tucker. He has his own network. Would he love as a as a guy that's running a network to take out the Daily Wire and to take out the place that you work, Fox? Of course, the answer is yes. He would love to take all of your audience and monetize Pause it for it a second. Create. I just want you to like contemplate this because what's fascinating about this, in addition to Ruben saying, I'm not talking about intentions and then goes on to talk about intentions. He doesn't even understand what that word means. But it's so obvious to him what is going on in that sphere and i will tell you that it has never ever ever occurred to me and i would i would i would bet this is the case with with just about everyone we know in the center to the left iteration of all these things that it has never occurred to us that we want to take out any of these things because ultimately we're here I mean, yeah, it's it's now my job and it's been my job for, you know, uh, well over a decade, my my primary job for well over a decade, a couple of decades, actually. And um, but I, I've been able to make a living at this. I want political change. Like, like I'm doing this for ideological purposes. If I want to stay in, in a, uh, you know, a sitcom actor uh, or a sitcom writer or director, for that matter, I would do it. I still like gigs 10 years after I stopped doing it, eight years after I was still doing deals. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, Bob's Burgers. I'm talking about like writing scripts for AMC and this and that. But I, this is more important. And then I'm like, all right, I got to figure out how I can make money at doing this. But it's not even like it's not it's not even he doesn't even have to preface this comment with like, of course, you'd want to take out the Daily Wire. Like. Like I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of Pod Save America, yeah. 
but like the idea that like you know the the that any part it's never occurred to me to make a single decision to try and undermine pod save America. Maybe like I would argue against some of the politics, Yeah, but like that's just the mentality. They're involved in a grift. That's what, when we say it's a grift, like it's not that they're trying to make money. It's that making money comes first. Yeah. Go ahead. A new network that is the number one thing in, let's say, right leaning or conservative media. So, is he willing, would he be willing perhaps to go down roads that maybe, maybe even he wasn't as comfortable with to attain that? I'd have to ask him specifically, but I think the answer is probably. So, Ben Shapiro <laughs> at the so, Daily Wire so is scared. a big fish, and everyone's kind of going for the big fish right now. Fox is a big fish, everyone's going for the big fish. And there are different reasons that everyone kind of wants to do that. And I don't think they're purely nefarious in terms of being hating someone because of their religion. I think some of them are kind of like pretty obvious business decisions. Well, I'm not comfortable going as far as you just did. First of all, like I know a lot of those individuals that you just named and and I can yeah. never know someone's motivations. And I I'm not criticizing no, no, look, you, Dave. I, but you know, that's you, why you, I'm not saying I, I don't know. know that if I don't know someone's motivations yeah. if I don't know someone's motivations, I don't I don't I hate it when people do that to me. You're doing this because of X or Y. You don't know me or why I'm doing something, you know, and what I actually believe. Not you, Dave, the proverbial you, right? Because you've never yep. impugned my motivations. But the left has constantly impugned my motivations, and it's my least sure. favorite thing. But I do think, and again, this is beyond the individuals discussed, incentive structure on the Internet is leading certain yeah. conversations in directions in pursuit of eyeballs and traffic, okay? But what's interesting about this, Dave, is I think we're actually, and you, you, you know so much because of your involvement in Rumbles and local. Mm. I, there's actually, I think we're starting to see like eyeballs in traffic that that don't create true audience with real value is kind of worthless, Dave. Like it's just like attention seeking. What yeah? You know, so what I've been calling that lately is I think there's a certain set of people, and again, I'm not, and I, I maybe I misspoke or or you slightly. Posit, like the 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 cowardice that both of them are exhibiting like they're, they're, who are they talking about no one apparently they're having this extended the conversation about nobody even the people that explicitly reference they say i'm not talking about them <laughs> i'm only not i'm talking about people you probably never even heard of who are completely irrelevant to this <laughs> i mean the only point that will kane makes that is is true is that you know and this has been uh, my contention for a long time you used to hear like you know complaints like the corporate media uh, they're just chasing uh, you know uh, ratings the the uh, do stuff on youtube or twitch or wherever is like the ratings are just like instantaneous yeah and um and 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 yeah i do think that people need to exercise like a sort of a restraint and remember like the point of why they're doing stuff to avoid sort of falling into a trap of 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 pursuit of these things um and certainly, like, you know, we put our most salacious things on YouTube, but that's not what doesn't dictate what our show is. I mean, we, you know, we have an hour uh, at minimum dedicated to very um, sort of weedy, very dry, not necessarily YouTube uh, um catchy stuff uh, mr beast isn't talking about like the development of black civil rights right and but and, and then we use like you know these stooges uh, as a way of making other 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 points and and we have an agenda associated with that that is to to get into their algorithms um but they're so both like so afraid to call out the people that are garbaging up the area that they're in um it is hilarious like police yourselves guys if you're gonna talk about it then talk about it yeah. but all this like we're not gonna i'm not gonna refer to anybody who's actually doing this um you know like i i don't, I don't begrudge people making money i don't care if it's mr beast or even like uh you know if, if jimmy Dore. yeah I, jimmy Dore's in a you know an area of the the internet where he's basically you know hawking uh conspiracy theory and i had said you know almost 10 years ago 
the guy is basically going to turn into, uh, you know, the, 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 the left's Alex Jones. And what it does is it disempowers people. It uh, poisons the well. It makes it impossible for them to actually get, uh, you know, be able to discern between real information and not and whatnot. Um, I, I would be perfectly willing for him to have a very big business if it involved him not uh, saying bullshit. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, so much of this media is just generally like endure and that stuff is anxiety, um, I guess. Uh, anxiety maybe. porn. Yeah. And uh, but this is um, it's hilarious how they don't want to talk about it. And as soon as Will gives any type of pushback, Dave immediately crumbles. Like, oh, I'm not talking I'm so about sorry. It. I'm not talking about anybody, you know. She yeah. You heard wrong. I'm actually not going after Tucker when I say that. I'm just trying to say as a business oh, person, Tucker, if you were cr creating a competitive product, you would go for the number one guy. Right. Like if there's a if somebody's selling the number one toilet tissue. Uh, then another guy comes out, you're going to try apt to get his money. metaphor. Yeah, that's just how it is. Uh, but I would say in relation to what you're talking Very about. Very apt what metaphor. What you're really talking about is that the internet, because it has so opened up everything, there's always a fringe, and then there's a fringe of a fringe, and a fringe of a fringe, and a fringe of a fringe of a fringe, and there's always an audience there. So you're going to have people constantly chasing all of these things. We also live in a time where the, the, the He's not saying truth, anything because mainstream media amazing. has been so derelict in its duty, has been so blown apart. And we agree on so little that people are looking for anything that roughly sounds right wherever they can find it. So then I think what has happened now is there's a series of people. And I'm truly, truly not going after anyone specifically. I'm not there's saying a truth, positive. There's, there's a, a well, let's be clear here. There's a series of people. So he's like definitely thinking of people. And then he says, and I'm truly, truly not talking about people. About Candace Owens and Tucker Carlson. It's just amazing. <laughs> the absolute cowardice here. Like, what is the value of this to anybody listening except for people like me who want to make fun of him for it? You got to fill up Fox News audio space. Though. Go ahead. A portion of people who basically are what I call energy chasers. Oh, and energy they chasers. Some weird, shiny thing in the corner of the internet, and that will get clicks, which generate revenue and everything else. They will go there, and then they can actually shift the entire conversation into something that has very little to do with exactly where you started, which is the problems yes. of most people and how most people <laughs> Pause want Pause it for a second. Okay, I just want to be clear. Like, you to go back and look at like things like the Dr. Seuss. Like, I mean, I, I, I can't even like. Like the amount of freaking like complete distractions, that whole thing of what he just said, where they will chase something that is niche and ridiculous, like the war on Christmas, let's say, you know, because some uh, school in Wisconsin took the name Jesus out of some song or whatever it is. And then the, they'll change the whole narrative. That has been the sine qua non objective of right-wing media in this country from its inception create like whether it's like rush limbaugh and fox news talking about the absolute outrage at paul wellstone's funeral 20 years ago 25 years ago whenever it was i mean i just an example that just pops in my head to dr seuss you know having two books uh, or you know a caravan or um you know uh, you know crt remember that or uh, social justice warriors remember that i mean like um uh, the whatever they were talking about uh, you know obamacare and death panels and like i mean just the past 20 years the number of these things where a false narrative is created because it has some type of like energy or shiny thing as he says jade helm jade helm when they thought that the u.s government was going to invade texas and it was a huge you had senators you had republican senators talking about it QAnon. Oh, the birth certificate obama the birth certificate <laughs> I mean, like, these things are such massive fixtures. It's almost like looking around your house and forgetting, like, oh, wait a second. They built all these interior walls that are not don't support anything, and they have no reason to exist here. You forget. Like, the, our entire politics 
And remember the preamble where Kane says, like, I'm not talking about Israel. The, the shiny thing like Candace Owens and Tucker are doing is going away from supporting Israel to the extent Ben Shapiro and Dave Rubin are. Yeah, it's, it is... It is amazing how oblivious they are to the, in fact, like, their jobs exist for this. Both of them. Mr. Potato Head. Sine qua non is a, uh, a Latin phrase, like, uh, nothing's bigger. Without this, it cannot exist, I think, something like that. Yeah, nothing's more, uh, sort of, like, of the essence or more important. Primary. Um, Squirt Cobain Kyle Kalinske recently made videos about Dave Rubin and Sam Harris recently to capture your audience Sam you need to fight back <laughs> and make take videos about how smart and hot Crystal Ball is uh, JR in Philly Sam you energy chaser are your ears burning oh geez it's already okay um Ghost of Limbaugh, it's embarrassing to admit, but I heard my right-wing mom say the other day, Dave Rubin's killing it lately. People actually think this guy is smart and has integrity. Shake my head. That's where the audience is. 